September 2014. Following the outbreak of Ebola virus in the West African sub-region, a suspected sample is being rushed to Ghana's Noguchi Memorial Institute for testing. The sample is taken to a highly secure lab called the P3 lab. The only one of two labs in the West African sub-region, sophisticated and equipped to handle this level of containment. named after a uh, Japanese scientist, Dr. Hideo Noguchi, and the reason was that he was actually working here in Ghana. He had his medical education in Japan, and then joined Rockefeller Foundation in the US, and in 1927 or so, he was sent down to Ghana, late 1927, early 1928, so then Gold Coast, to come and help a team who were investigating the cause of yellow fever. And um, unfortunately, he died whilst doing that work in Accra. It was opened in 1979 by then President Hilary Mann with the whole mandate of researching into infectious diseases of public health importance in the country and in the sub region. The current typical one being the Ebola threat, which is around the sub region. So we were able to do that testing. When H1N1 came, we were also the ones who were doing the testing. Two of my colleagues who are coming to work or process the sample that is suspected to be a viral hemorrhagic fever. They will have to open the box within the biosafety cabinet. So they will open it and they will take the sample out. They will spin the sample, this blood sample, they have to spin it to separate the cells from the cell-free medium. What we need is a cell-free medium for the work. So after that, they will then early cut the cell-free medium and use it for work. And they will discard the cells, the, the one that has been separated. They will discard it. But they don't, only, they don't just discard it. They, they have an autoclave bag, they put it in, and they will autoclave it after that. We've done quite a lot in the area of uh, health research supporting the country's activities and also the sub-region. But one of the things which is ongoing now is that we uh, was at the sub-regional center for polio eradication. So we will test for all the polio viruses or suspected cases of polio viruses from Ghana, Togo and Benin. Not to not only the country but in the sub-region. There's been studies on uh, malaria when uh, you had the change in uh, drug policy. All the data was generated from studies that were done here to support that uh, change. The focus of this department is to harness you know, the discipline of immunology towards uh, improved treatment control and also the prevention of infectious diseases which are endemic in Ghana. There are a number of diseases that you know, plague our people including malaria, uh, schistosomiasis, 
Borreliosa, TB, and others. We are interested in parasitic diseases, diseases that are caused by parasites, like the malaria parasite. We are interested in tracking the emergence and the spread of drug-resistant parasites so that the current anti-malarial drugs available. We want to see whether the parasites are evolving into forms that will be resistant to the drugs. We are involved in research into the mode of transmission of uh, Borrelia ulcer. We know Borrelia ulcer is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium ulcerans. This bacteria is thought to be an environmental pathogen, but um, cultivating the bacteria from the environment has been very difficult to achieve. So some of the research we're doing is to address this. With the establishment of the institute, there was um, what was called technical cooperation agreement with the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA. And these were five-year support grants or grant supports to help establish the place, to keep it going. So every five years, I met part of it. They will agree on some studies to do and the equipment to go with it and things that they will actually ship the equipment to the place for people to do work. By and large, we've had a lot of support from Japan. People have also, through their own research efforts and things, contributed to the stock of equipment that we have. I take the example of uh, the um, uh, Ebola crisis that we have right now. Noguchi has been instrumental at the center of Ghana's preparedness and response so far. If we had not had Noguchi in Ghana, it would have been a totally different game story. Well, we have a very good uh, working relationship because uh, Noguchi is an internationally acclaimed uh, research institute. And any time that we uh, we need a research background or maybe confirmation, we have to run to Noguchi. When the Ebola issue came, for example, we should have sent our samples to France or um, uh, Dakar. However, Noguchi is available. And so whatever Noguchi uh, does and says, then that is final. And that has brought a lot of comfort to Ghanaians because if it had been outside, uh, imagine the trouble that we had been waiting for the results for maybe weeks. The, the rumours that we have had of suspected cases, the following day we get to know that they are negative. If we, Noguchi was not there, we would have to wait several days, sometimes a week, before we get the results. That's a, that would have changed completely the, um, the context in which we are working. And, uh, I think uh, everybody out there should appreciate the fact that we have Noguchi and they are doing a sterling job. Uh, with research work, we talk of evidence-based policy. And as a country, that is the path we have taken. And so with the research findings Noguchi comes out with, we base our policies on the findings of this research work. In Ghana, the, our project uh, consists of three or four. And our biggest one is cooperation to Noguchi Memorial Institute for medical research. And uh, our cooperation consists mainly of capacity development of the researcher and a technician working in the, this research institute. And at the same time, uh, we are trying to uh, establish physical infrastructure and facility of Noguchi Institute. Uh, two of them. So software and hardware have to be integrated. So this is very important. JICA has been collaborating in many areas with Noguchi Memorial Institute for medical research. Uh, one of them is the project for study of antiviral and antiparasitic compounds from selected Ghanaian medical plants. As you can see on this picture, and uh, this is a currently ongoing project and the partnership that allowed JICA to train Noguchi staff through dispatching experts from Japan and also provide state-of-the-art equipment. Every year, the Japanese government trained Ghanaians 
300 Ghanaians every year in all sectors. If I say in all sectors, the health sector, the education, the agri, the health, um, SMEs, you know, uh, support for farmers as well. At the Nguchi Institute, we have competent people there. So what the Japanese government uh, has been doing over the years is to give them competency-based training courses in Japan. Apart from the short programs, which we call it competency-based training program, we have the master's program. So most of them, most of the uh, staffs at Nguchi has been given programs in Japan to pursue their master's program as well as their PhD program. We want to be a frontline kind of institution that has answers or finds answers to some of the problems that are health related. We have an internal quality control mechanisms to check the work that you're doing yourself. For example, if we're testing for Ebola, you have a, a sample which you know is Ebola. So it has the proteins you're looking for in Ebola virus. So you put that in the gel and you run the assays, you do the experiments. So that should show you that this is, and you have another point, another uh, control, which is negative. There's nothing of the Ebola in it. So that one should also give you a certain pattern. And then you put your sample in. So then within those comparisons, you can say that the sample is negative because it's similar to the one that I know there's nothing in it. Or this is positive because it's similar to the, so that's what you do. Besides that, you need to be also be comparative, uh, comparable to others in the system, in the country, in the, in, the, in the whole world. So again, what we do, what we call external quality assurance. For some of the labs, there are air agencies and companies in the world which will send you anonymous samples. They know what is inside. And then you test it and it comes and you have to run the sample within with your, pro with your protocols and send the results to them. And then they'll bring the results back from the whole world. So they will send this to as many institutions as prescribed to that. And uh, you see where yours fall in relation to all the others in the world, not just only you. So we have also those external quality mechanisms that we do. When you look at the setup that we have here, it is very advanced. If you ever work here, and then you move out to also work in some of these specialized like maybe the UK, US, etc. You realize that this place is well equipped. Gucci is a very credible institution. This is an institution that has been certified by WHO and it is serving the sub-region. Ebola and other things, you need specialized place to test. So some of us were interested and said, okay, so if it's not malaria, if it's not this, it's not this, what else is that? What other viruses are we not seeing? So people have started looking at viral hemorrhagic fevers, viruses which cause that symptoms similar to what you see with Ebola. Yellow fever is one, dengue is one, Lassa fever is one, Marburg is one. So we had that going here long before the outbreak occurred. And that is how come people could depend on us. Having finished or completed the initial processing of the Ebola suspected sample that we received, we have done in the P3 lab, we have extracted the nucleic acid of the sample. What it's going to do is to amplify the nucleic acid that we have extracted from the P3. So we have placed it in the machine. It takes roughly about one and a half hours for the application to be over. After the run, we check the positive and the negative controls. If the positive controls is showing a clear amplification, that means the sample worked very well for the positive. From what we have just seen, it shows that all the samples were negative because the sample curves look like just like the negative control curve that we just seen. But the positive control is clearly showing the sigmoid shape and none of the samples showed that shaped curve. So we can say that the samples that we ran were all negative.